Yeah, and this is, I can, can, so my, my full title is School of Engineering Professor of Teaching Innovation, and this is always confusing because um, I don't teach innovation. Um, I think that's important to know. I teach innovatively, maybe, or innovatively, if, uh, since I'm uh, English. So it's more about methods of communication. Um, how, how do we teach? Uh, what kind of things do we use? What kind of examples? Fluid mechanics is inherently a visual subject. Um, I can draw drawings on the board very easily, but if a picture's worth a thousand words, then a moving picture's worth you know, a thousand pictures, so it's worth a million words. So we use a lot of video, we use a lot of um, imaging, a lot of simulations, a lot of things like that. Even YouTube is a fantastic uh, uh, source of uh, examples to, to show people. Um, we'll do the math on the board, we'll do the calculations, but, but, uh, but um, really the visual image is what goes with it. So, so it's more about innovative teaching, I would say, rather than teaching innovation. Um, I'd say the, the wonderful thing you get, uh, of course, here is every year um, fantastic new students walking through the door. Um, typically none of them are in the food industry or in the consumer products industry, so we do a lot of work with other consumer product companies as well on things like skin creams or um, shaving or uh, um, lubricity for shaving strips or materials like that. But they're not biased by uh, established wisdoms, um, you know, so people won't tell you, oh, you can't do this, this was tried 50 years ago. Um, so, so that's an important part of it, is to have a, a fresh source of, of fantastic talent coming in every year. But I'd say it's also really important to have a motivated and, and team on the other side who actually aren't just uh, um, sending money your way or, or um, saying go ahead and come back in two years and tell us what we've done. We like to do monthly teleconferences to so actually share information. You really like to have a team on the other side who can do the texture panels or the, the kind of more consumer product kind of things as well. Uh, and frequently they know a whole uh, wide range of materials that you might wish to try or you might, might wish to look at. And so having a really um, I say really invested partner and turns out for, in my experience to be key. Um, you want people who want to have weekly or monthly updates. You, uh, you know, you don't want them micromanaging, but, but people who are really invested in, uh, in, in the results and correcting things before they go off the rails or before you go down a dead, uh, you know, a dead end that um, they already know is not going to be successful. Where do they come from? The great thing at MIT, they come from around the world, right? So, um, so I think uh, we always have usually a token American in the group, but I think they're usually a minority. You know, the World Cup's on at the moment. Um, this is the, the one unifying thing is I think we have more Iranians in the lab than anyone at the moment. So, um, so we're French, Iranians, uh, Koreans, you know, so it's very much an international group. And, uh, um, MIT draws its talent from around the world, but just like in real estate people say that the three most important things are location, location, location. I always say at MIT the three most important things are students, students, and students. And that would be undergraduate students, graduate students, and then postdoctoral uh, or postdocs as we call them. But all three of them come with a different input of uh, their background, their knowledge. Um, and the one th fantastic thing at MIT is that um, you don't know where one department starts and another department ends and so there isn't a building that is mechanical engineering and a building that is chemistry. They're all kind of interconnected through the corridors and so a lot of my students are joint advised. Um, I'm a terrible chemist, um, I'm a reasonable engineer, but I can work with a chemist or with a physicist or with a chemical engineer. And um, many of our projects have two advisors, and I think that's something that you see more and more of, is that many students have two PhD advisors or two postdoctoral advisors, because you I always say to them, you want to be the, the, you know, the, the sum of, uh, of the, your different inputs, so you want, you want my input, but you want someone else's input. What makes you unique or bring a new challenge or a new solution to a challenge is that you take two very, very different orthogonal inputs and you add them together and you get something totally new.